Oh, hi, Hugo. So, uh, what did you want to meet about? Mark, darling, I have a business proposition for you. Um, okay. What do you have in mind? I hear you have a watch brand, and I have a frightfully colossal amount of talent, success, and dashing good looks, naturally. Right, and what exactly are you proposing? A watch collab, darling. Like the one you've done with um, TGV and the Range Master. Oh, so you want to uh, design a watch together? I'm thinking platinum, stealth wealth, baby. We could put my stunning face on the dial. Hand painted onto Mother of Pearl, of course. The Hugo Master. Or perhaps the Isla Nublanda. Get it? Uh, that sounds wildly expensive. One has to project a certain level of success, old sport. I'll wear it on the red carpet, and Leo and Brad and Jurassic Jeff will be positively green with envy, and they'll demand to have one too. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. We'll sell more watches than that Madame Gaga or any other celebrity ambassador ever could. Have you seen what I've done for Hugh Lex? I'm real sorry, Hugo. I gotta go uh, record with TGV now. But you haven't even heard my ideas for the advert. We could shoot it on the beach in the Hamptons. It's your neck of the woods, I believe. On the island that is long. I know some lovely swimsuit models. Mark, darling. Hello. Hello. Mark. Hello. Mark, darling. Hello. Hello. How rude. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Once again, I'm joined by the horological legend that is Mark. How are you, sir? Good, how are, how are you? I'm okay, I'm doing yeah. okay. A little frazzled as usual. Yeah, yeah. Are you better than usual? Because you, you're still frazzled. Yeah, I think coming back from Italy gave me a little bit of uh, zest, a little bit of, Got it. Uh, you know, lust for life. Well, everything over there moves at the speed of a snail, so. Very true. Yeah. Very yeah. true. I, I haven't been as relaxed, I don't think, for about 20 years, so. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. As I was there, I mean, you know, now I'm back, it's like, you know, I've got to move again. And now but, everything that you did, you got to kind of work through now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so how, how have you been? Doing good. Everything's yeah. going good. good. Yeah, no complaints, no complaints. Busy. Busy, good. So I should probably explain, and I'll preface this, because this is a video I've been wanting to do for absolutely donkey's years because I, I, I especially with you, I wanted to get your opinion on it. Um, right. Your feedback uh, with your insight into the industry as well as your engineering uh, side. Sure. Um, but I've never had the right context, the, re the right framing, how to frame the discussion. Got it. Um, and then about a month ago, I uh, acquired, well, I didn't acquire this one, I, I, I reviewed three uh, watches, micro brands, all inspired by the G Gerald Genta, the Royal Oak Nautilus kind yep. of look, right? Sure, uh-huh. And of course, in typical fashion, uh, I actually decided to, to, to add one of them to my own collection, which I did. Of course. Uh, you, know, you know how it goes. There's nothing wrong with that. But in doing so, somebody in the comments asked a really great question. They said, um, as it's based on a model from the 70s that this, this is, by the way, this is a Nevada Grenchen, this one. Okay. This is the F77. Mm -hmm. Because it's based on something that they did back in the 70s, and it has right. its its own little quirks in terms of like, it's it's inspired by motor racing. Also, obviously the Royal Oak, but motor racing as well. So like the mm -hmm. dial has this pattern, like a fabric of the intern, um, interior of a sports car, right? Got it. Little okay. things like this, got different hands, sure. blah, blah, blah. And they asked, 
considering all of that, do you still consider it a homage watch? Okay. And I was like, it is and it isn't, mm -hmm. right? And then it suddenly occurred to me that um, th there's, no, there's no black and white answer, right? There's, there's right. an actual a scale of homogeneous, if you oh, will. Oh, right, I was gonna say, it's like Swissness, yeah, homogeneous, yeah. yeah, sure. And I've, I've managed to figure it out. So we'll go into that. I'm gonna read, a, uh, I've identified eight different types of homage watches. Okay. And the really great at the top, 10 out of 10, and, the, and, the, and um, zero, you know, being counterfeit replicas at zero, right? Because- Understood. It, technically, they are a homage of something they're legally ripping off, right? Correct. So anyway, sorry, I've, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, no, it's good. It's just good because I have no idea what the hell we're doing today. So right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said going <laughs> blind, don't, you know, I want uh, you yeah. genuinely. This is my favorite kind of video to prepare for. I did absolutely nice. nothing. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Whereas I've been studiously, you know, yes. all these notes, scribbling. Yeah, no, um, no notes. I have nothing but a bottle of water. Perfect. So let's just get the wristwatch check before I completely forget. Uh, what, are, what are you wearing today? Oh, well, I, this, we could probably talk for a while. I picked up a Doxa. Nice, oh, um, I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah, very, you probably saw it on Instagram. So this is my first Doxa. Um, it's based on, of, uh, it's a Clive Cussler, like uh, memorial watch, if you will. Clive Cussler is an author. He's written dozens of novels. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. His lead main character, Dirk Pitt, it's all, fic uh, it's all fictional. Uh, he wore an orange face Doxa. Uh, honestly, if Clive, Clive Cluster has probably sold more Doxa in North America <laughs> than Doxa ever dreamed due to this guy, you know, being in all the books. Um, right. But they made one, yeah, it's not orange dial, but it's a very adventure kind of dial. It's an aged, it's an aged look to uh -huh. it um, because it's supposed to be like a relic because he always, uh, he dove on shipwrecks and he right. discovered stuff. So um, so I am, I'm wearing my, my first Doxa. Yeah, nice. very exciting. Nice, congrats. I, when yeah, I saw you. it, I haven't watched your unboxing yet. I, it's in my watch list uh, to, to watch later list. Yeah, I will, I will. Uh, but uh, I saw it on your Instagram and it, it made me think of Indiana Jones, the dial. It's exactly what it is. Yeah, right. uh, ex exactly. It was like an old map. Right. Yeah, Perfect. like a compass rose. That's yeah, really and not, cool. not to. And my double, I'm doing the flighty. Oh, yay! That well, perfect for today's discussion because that definitely oh, takes inspiration it? from oh, the excellent. Navi time a little bit, right? Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very Thank nice. you. Is that the 21 millimeter bracelets that you do? No, that's it. <laughs> this is a, a 22 millimeter mesh off of a Seiko 5 that I trim the end, the, the, the lugs of to get it nice. to fit. So it's actually Seiko branded. It's got the Seiko oh, logo wow. on it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Very I don't, cool. I, I think I ripped the part of Seiko 5 from inventory to scavenge the bracelet. Nice, nice. Were you there with filing it? Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. right exactly. Right. <laughs> Dremel, nail file, everything. Yeah. Perfect. Very uh, shade tree mechanic type. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm wearing, uh, I don't think you've seen this one. This is a. Um, no. So I should tuck in the. the, the it looks like an ellipse, there. but it's not. It, yeah, yeah you're, this is why I wore it today. This is my Universal Genève. Okay. super slim micro rotor designed by Genta. He did this before the uh, Patek Ellipse and then the Patek two years later then did the, I've done a video all about this, but then did the Ellipse and it's like, come on, right. you're, you're homaging Genta. And then two years after that, they hire Genta to do the Nautilus. So it's like, right. you, you know who he is. Right, of course. And this goes into a really good point, which we'll discuss later, how brand, all brands have homaged everything. Everything, something. sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nobody's innocent here, unless it's like Erwerk the, or something extreme where they do some right. craziness. Or, the, or the guy who invented the water clock. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Klepsidra. Klepsidra, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I don't think there's been, well, we, we haven't mentioned it for about two episodes. So Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when we ranked the Rolexes? And yeah. Because because of my dyslexic brain, I completely yeah. forgot one of the 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 entries. So oh right, I, right. Uh, it was the Milgauss, I think, right? Yeah, and I had to retroactively put it in, and I phoned you, and I was like, "What's your score?" And then you, I was like, "Oh, thank God, because it adds up." And got it. Yeah. Um, so no I'm going to ask you to keep score as well, so we can avoid some. Uh, I will keep score. I yeah. have said pen and writing stick. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, so we should explain homage means something completely, well, very different to what us watch enthusiasts uh, right. um, than normal people, right? 
right. uh, normal, <laughs> normal. <laughs> people that have lives. <laughs> people have lives. <laughs> I would qualify 10 as a reissue from a brand that legitimately did that watch. Got it. A long time ago. So um, a modern Speedmaster, right? Got it. It, to me, that it's it's a homage to their own past, which, in my opinion, legitimizes it. Extremely legitimate. Yeah, extremely legitimate, um, and okay. it's their design. Give so, me a one. So that's number ten, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the first type of homage, which we should get out of the way. An original reissue from the same brand. So that's ten. Sure. Number one is, like we said earlier, counterfeit. Well, okay. um, you know, an illegal homage so that okay. can include franken watches that are pretending to be something they're not okay. uh, replicas etc etc so that's Got it. Th so those are two types okay and they demonstrate the whole uh, ranking system understood so the third type okay oh. w is what i call homage specialists okay, okay? so oh. these are brands that pretty much just do homage watches that's all they do i got pa it. pagani yeah uh, San Martin. Yeah. Uh, steel, is it Steel Dive? Steel Dive, yeah. Yeah, steel, that one I'm not, I haven't had ex hands on experience with, so I don't know if you have. No. So, where, for you, where do they rank in the <laughs> scale? <laughs> you know, that's kind of a loaded question because, you know, and I'll be honest, that's the way I started, you know, yeah, my own yeah, brand. Yeah. Was, oh, we'll get know, to that. We'll get to that later. Okay, great. Oh, <laughs> yeah. this is going to be excellent. <laughs> Um, do you mean where on the where on the scale do, do they lie? Oh, so yeah. we're doing this is the first one. We're ready. Yeah. We're starting. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Boy. Go for it. Okay. Um, so where do I put them? Um, somebody like a Pagani, I would put them pretty close to the bottom. I would say. Yeah. Um, maybe like a three or so. I right. mean, they're not putting. It doesn't say Rolex on the dial. It doesn't say relax on the dial. Right. You know, but it's just kind of they're kind of just taking the one thing and just replacing it you know, with their own logo, 100%, you know, one to one. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would make them a three. Now, do I want to lump everybody in that? Like San Martin, C Stern, all these guys. I, I don't know too much about them, mm -hmm. but Pagani, I certainly know. And I, I would, I would rate it a three. Okay. Wow. I was, that's better than I was. I was gonna, I was gonna give it a two. Oh my God. That's okay. And the reason is, is because I like, I'm a nice guy. You're gonna find, you yeah. know. And I don't want to <laughs> sink any ship, especially again, especially where I started. Um, I'm sure yeah. there's detractors of me that are gonna be screaming, "You, beep 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 beep, yeah, beep, yeah, yeah, beep. Yeah. you're a one." <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Actually, we're talking about detractors. I got quite an interesting little story to tell you. But um, okay, so you're a two. I'm a three. I'm gonna keep yeah. score while you keep score. Some are better than others. San Martin is definitely better in terms of quality, yeah. and and I, and the ones I've seen were, were pretty good value for the money. Um, Pagani. The problem is, is that there's a lot of scammers who claim to be them, and then. Uh, also, the, the 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 nature of AliExpress and stuff, it's totally different. It, it's like the Wild West or the Wild East, you could say, compared to like Amazon and eBay, because it's it's the uh, the the way they enforce their policies to protect the buyers is is very right. very it's different. And not very, uh, yeah. Yeah, a I lot of people it. say, "Why haven't you reviewed one?" And I'm just like, "I don't." I, this, I have friends who've bought them and been scammed, and and it's just I'm not. I don't want to support that. Personally, right. Um, right. then you've got QC issues, you've got misalignment, uh, sure. debris on the dials, this kind of stuff. And then um, I haven't heard, uh, I've had heard some really great stories about some of their, their customer yeah. support and terrible stories as well. So okay. it's not good, you know, to me, it's a false economy. I would save up a little bit more and get something which we'll talk about in a moment. Higher on higher on the homogenous scale. E exactly, exactly. I love it. Um, I love so, it. So that's where I stand. Okay. So the 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 fourth type is what I can call heritage brand homages or or heritage brands making homages. Okay. So this includes Tissot doing the PRX. Right. I mean, it's blatantly gent inspired, but yeah, sure. it's, it's, it's got its own deal. It's something from their own past. Squally, you know, mm -hmm. there's another one. Uh, they got amazing history, but yet they do offer. They do offer the Rolex clones. Yep. They're Rolex clones. Invicta, their own history. Yep. Pro Diver, which we've yeah. discussed. Uh, Cassie Oak. 
Cassie Oak, fantastic. I'm going to even put Nevada Grenchen on this because yep. they got a great history uh, Swiss brand, but then they make this, which is obviously, obviously Gento inspired. Bulova, Bulova, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. ha have you seen their, their Royal Oak? No, they I don't did think so. Back during their kind of like shaky period when they were trying to, mm -hmm. you know, this is why a lot of brands started doing it because they were suffering after the quartz crisis. Right, right. Patek. Sure. I mean... That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, you know, if you look at someone and say, oh, that was a good idea, and then you start doing it, does that make you a Maji? I mean, I guess in a, in a way. I mean, but... they did it their way. Right. Right. But For I sure. mean, come on, look at this. Well, that's what I said to you when you looked, showed it. I was like, it looks yeah. like an ellipse. Yeah, yeah. This is a couple <laughs> of years previous. It's no right. accident. And then they turn around and hire Genta to do the Nautilus. Right, right. After he has success with it. I've done a whole video about it. I mean, one could say that the Nautilus is a homage to the Royal Oak, but, it was, right. but it's done by the same design. I mean, right. know, this, is, this is why it's so problematic. So yeah, where do you stand on her heritage brands doing homage watches? So how, how, uh, how, um, how high on the homage scale do they go? Um, you know, I would go pretty, I would go pretty high and pretty true. Um, cause I think they do a really good job about it. It's not just a rebrand or a relabel, you know, the PRX, for example, you know, um, there is still design work, even though you have the overall shape that you want to do. Um, mm. there's just a lot that goes into case design and still making the whole thing flow. Uh, so I would throw them at a seven. Perfect. Me too. Me too. Uh, wow. Look at us. We're a pair <laughs> of sevens. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it and it gets really complicated because they're like if we t if we go back to Squale, right? A lot of people don't understand that that they originally started making those Submariner style cases for Blanc Pain, mm -hmm. right? And and it's so so which means like if they did it if they did that style of case on the bequest of another heritage brand, right? Does that is, legitimize is that, it? Is it now right? Is it wrong or right or right? Yeah, or wrong? is it right or wrong or right? And, and now that they started doing it again, is it, you know, what does it mean? Yeah. Well, exactly, exactly. Do, do you think that, maybe this is a bit controversial, but... That's okay. Do you think it damages a brand? Yes. You do? Yeah, in some, in some respects, in some lights. Um, right. But you know what? Um, I don't say in some lights, I'll say in some people's, um, in some people's minds. Um, but, you know, you got to weigh that damage with what it could do to your brand's revenue. Right, right, and right. And right. I think that some, some of us will sell our soul to the devil just a little bit um, to get more business. And, you know, if it brings more people into your brand, is that a bad thing? Not mm. really. It does mm. its job. It's like a piece of bait on a string. Right, 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 right. Uh, not to go into Islander, but like, because we're going to discuss that later, because, but I, I'll, t I'll tell you now. I, so I was watching a podcast, right? Right. I, and uh, I'm not going to name names, just, you know, normal watch enthusiasts. Every so often I kind of chime in. I just want to hear what the opinions of people, because it, it was, I can't remember. It was it, actually, it was about homages and your name came up. Right. And uh, one of the gen, oh, not gentlemen, one of the ungentlemanly people <laughs> just started going on this tirade of vitriol hate. Uh, and I, I was so, I was angry. I was really angry because I was like, well, you know, you're my friend and uh, yeah, I disagree. I laugh it, I laugh it off. Y yeah, yeah <laughs> I don't you, care. Got a, you got a very thick skin um, and you have to, to be on YouTube especially, but. Yeah, you, you, you told me that many years ago. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, and, but you know what it got to me? It was because you're my friend and I'm naturally defensive. Right, I get and, it. And also the second thing is that he's never put a watch out. Like what right. you, do, well, you yeah, no, no, no qualification, no, no idea, no yeah. idea. And, and yeah. at the end of the day, like you're trying to put food on the table for your family. Right. And yeah. I, I, anyway, sorry, that's another totally different. No, don't discussion. worry about it. Um, don't worry about it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the defense, but it's not necessary. It's not necessary. I unsubscribed and I'll oh, never watch it again. Good. So uh, good. Bye. Good. You know, <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, carrying on. So, okay. Yeah, that was ahead. the fourth type, fifth type. Vintage inspired. Wait, 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 wait. A one, two, three. Four. Yeah, so wait, wait, let, me, so let me just back up a second in case I didn't yeah. really understand. The first two that we talked about, one was the replica and one was the true homage. So we're basically saying that you and I wear one, one, ten, ten. 
Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. T uh, ten out of ten is is the reissue by the the the. That's the first yeah. type. And so so the first two are really. I'm not really grading them. I'm more like. Yeah. Well, I we agree we. With you. I think to, for the scale to work, we have to agree that zero is a replica and. Uh, is it zero or one? Oh, it's, it's zero. One. It's zero. No, because zero, zero, zero to ten means you have eleven numbers. Oh God! Okay. Well, this yeah, is why go, you're here go, then. <laughs> don't go doing that. You got to do one, one to ten. That way, five is in the one, two. Now I'm gonna do my two, three, four. Yeah, that way, five is kind of in the middle. <laughs> really, it's five and a half. But yeah. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. Okay, replica is one then, and then ten out of ten is is. Yeah, thank you. Reissue. Okay. All right, back to number five, numero cinco. Go ahead. So this is brands that are vint vintage inspired, right? Um, and typically micro brands. So um, I, oh, damn it, I should have brought it. I've, I've, I've put it away. WMT, have you heard of them? No. So they do um, mainly Rolex homages, but of very, very obscure Rolexes that you just can't, unless you've got billions of dollars to, like for example, I bought their homage of a, a Oman dial with the Armani Royal symbol that um, got it very collectible you know they sell at christie's for ridiculous money i'm never gonna own i even if i did have that money I, i'm not interested got i just it. so it says it says wmt on the dial yeah. yeah 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 but they're basically just reissuing say like um like a bark case or something like exactly stuff that really like a try try door stuff like real exactly that nobody's got got it. exactly okay. and they do it very well and they have really nice branding really nice packaging I think they're based in Hong Kong, and the quality uh, is. Some people complain that they're a bit expensive. That was gonna be my question. What is the, what is the price range? Um, it depends from around about four hundred to to uh, up to a thousand if you're getting like a, a mechanical chronograph, something Got like it. that. Got it. Okay. But they're they're really well done. They're, the okay. quality. Then you got brands like Dan Henry, which yes, he sure. does it in a totally different way where he. Like I, I own two in my collection, the 1972 and the right. 62. Uh, I always talk about this because the 62 is a perfect example. If, if I hold it far away, it looks like a speedy and that's because of the case right. and the, the bezel. But then in the hands of Universal Genève, Evil Nina, the, the sub dials are from the Daytona and these are all inspired watches in his collection. Right. right? Mm -hmm. and. It's funny, I got the comment literally the other day about my review of this because um, this one I, I, uh, I bought and gave quite a harsh review because there were, the, the chronograph wasn't working when I received it and I had to send it back. They did look after me. Someone commented ju just the other day, oh, it was a, it's a, a clone of the, mm -hmm. um, what's it called, Porsche design. You know, Porsche the design, one. sure, yeah. yep. It's exactly what I think of when I look at it. Yeah, if you squint your eyes from, from your distance, sure. yeah, that, that's yep. what you probably think it is. But yep. it, then it has a sandwich dial, it has an alarm complication, it has this, that, and the sure. other, which makes it different. So I don't consider it a clone. No, if it's it, not. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's all more of a mashup. A lot of it's a mashup, mash yeah. yeah. And it's great value here, uh, really good quality and... So vintage inspired, the vintage inspired homage. This is. I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with a five there, sir. Right. Okay. I'm gonna go with a five. Um, okay. And I'll t and I will tell you why. Um, okay. Go for it. Probably it's loading my own deck. <laughs> it's because, you know, I don't feel like there's much in the way of design work that needs to go on, rather than reading through a history, a watch history book. And again. Right. I'm not, a, no offense, and I can't say I'm not guilty of doing the same things um, on some things, um, but that kind of is, you know, there's not much in the way of design going on. And not yeah. a whole lot. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna give it a six. It's okay. You can give it a six. I, I think, I think it's tricky doing it on the affordable level because you're always gonna be um, kind of a victim of the movement. So to speak. Oh yeah, yes. I know you know. We've gone through it a million times yeah. with with our collabs. Um, yeah. You know, it dictates where the sub dials go or where yeah, the crown. It tells you everything where the date's going to be. It tells you yeah. everything. Yeah. And it becomes a bit of a kind of creative kill, like a uh, kind of I don't know. It takes it's some of some, the fun out of it. It does take some of the fun out. Of it. it reminds me of when. 
So when I was in engineering, I'll just kind of regale you with a quick story. You know, oh, I love these. I love these. Yeah. Uh, so you're a mechanical engineer, and you're making a box, and the box is loaded up with a bunch of circuit boards, and you get the design. You know, you'll you'll take your design. It's a circuit board, and, and for heat transfer and structural purposes, we know there's got to be eight screws in it, and keep out areas for solder mask and washers and everything else, and we'll give it to electrical design. Electrical design will look at it and go. Well, I can't fit all the components on here because you're taking away all this room from me. Mm. And it was, oh no, remove this screw. No, remove this screw. Remove this screw. We can't have that. You know, it, it doesn't work. And that's kind of like what we face here. You know, the date has to be this distance from the center point. It can't mm. be more. It can't be less. Uh, you know, like you said, the crown has to be here. Has to be at three. Uh, all that stuff. So yeah. you are very fixed. Um, you're very fixed by the movement. The movement dictates everything else. Yeah, I, I only give it a slightly higher score because I feel that there are some brands that are very vintage inspired that are, mm -hmm. do it better than others. For example, Laurier. Mm -hmm. They make watches that take reference from. Yeah. You know, so many different. I, I've I've co-designed watches with them as well, as you know. So yep. like. I think they do it better than, let's say, a Dan or a, or a, certainly a WMT, who is just very much, it looks like a Rolex, you know, Copying that's it. and doing it, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that was, I, I, your story was really fitting because I, 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 probably people out there don't realize what goes into it and how even making a, a clone can be yeah. challenging, you know. So, um, okay, number six. This is what I call the moonlighting uh, uh, homage brands. Moonlight. Yeah, moonlighting. So I think Squalia comes into this as well because they have two sides to them. Got it. You know? That's um, the moonlight part. I get yeah, it. Yeah, the moonlight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Moonlighting yeah. is in the sense of I have a second job. Yeah, exactly. Got <laughs> exactly. Got it. The, the best example is Steinhardt, right? They yeah. have original models and then yes. they have like blatant just... 100% cop, photocopy machine copies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've owned two, so uh -huh. I, you know, and they're great. They're very high quality Swiss made. Um, and this is what I would recommend if, you know, if, you, if you're spending a couple of hundred on a, on a, on a Pagani or a mm -hmm. whatever, just keep saving and get this because you get a warranty, you get a reputable, they're a German company and right. they're amazing to deal with. And you get a, a, a Swiss May, a Swiss Silita or whatever it is they're using mm -hmm. nowadays, and they're impeccably done, right? You know, and and you don't you don't have to worry about being scammed or, and right. they even they even keep their value, right? You know, they so, do. Well, they keep their value because I would say they're so inexpensive to start with, right? Um, so they you know so there's not much you know you break it down to its constituency it's a great deal, you know, it's not like a car going to a chop shop. I mean, you put all those pieces together, it's about the same price, it's kind of crazy. So uh, I have to rank the brand as a whole, huh? I guess, I mean, I, Squalor definitely, for, is there any other brands you can think of that have like an original line and then a homage line? Well, besides my own. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let me think. Uh, well, I'm we've got sure to go 10 are. out of 10 here, obviously. No, uh, 11 <laughs> out of 10. Um, I'm sure there are others that kind of just escaping me. I, I want to say that a bunch of years ago, over a decade ago, I think Steinhardt cleaved off a portion of their company, the more original designs, into a new brand uh, called DeBaufry. And that didn't last. Really? Um, I, I didn't know that. Yes, D-E-B-A-U-F-R-E. -E. I'm pretty sure. Uh, like their pilot's watches and stuff went there. And then eventually, I think they just brought everything back into the fold because that kind of rebranding didn't work. Um, so I would put, I guess I'd put them at like a six. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a six there as well. You're a six also, huh? Okay, so number seven. Uh, this is what I call the fashion watch homage, right? Okay. And this exists on several platforms. A ton of, of them you see on Amazon. AliExpress, Alibaba, all this kind of stuff. Um, so what they do is that th they take whatever's trending in yeah. fashion yeah. and they make a cheaper version of it. And it's typically like in the style, but with a, like this name you never heard of. So like on Amazon, you, because I've bought many Casios on Amazon and there's always this 
one that I think, oh, that's a nice Casio. And then I click on it and it's oh, like... Oh, it's not a Casio. It's yeah. a Sunni Laga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I, I get emails from these brands almost daily. Yeah. They come from certain parts of the world, obviously. Uh, then you, you don't want to be their spokesman? No, no. <laughs> It'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, there's, there's no money in all the world that would... I don't, I don't believe I that. don't believe that statement. Because <laughs> I'm sure if a briefcase full of cash landed on your lap for one review, Urban Gentry, would be ceased, Urban Gentry ceases to exist, but you're retired somewhere in the south of France. <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> fine. No, it'll be Tuscany. It'll be a villa in Tuscany. I'll be t- I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Trying to think of the number now. <laughs> what about you? Oh, I, I, I know my number. Don't worry about it. You, oh, you have a number. Oh, I have a number. If somebody wants to buy the business, I got my number. Don't worry. I'm trying anyway. to think of a number. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so, um, so are we talking about like, I'm um, also like, you know, like after Daniel Wellington. Yes. You know, reached yes, peak yes. success. All of a sudden, every other watch, you know, just reverse the letters, put on two different letters. You exactly. Know, make another name up. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. They are. So we're not rating the Daniel Wellington, we're rating the Daniel Wellington homage. Yeah. Correct? Oh, and they do everything we're... from like yeah. a cheap version yeah. of a Richard Mille, whatever's yeah, yeah, yeah. hot, you know, whatever's. Yeah, we're, 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 down, we're down to a two. We're down to a two. What do yeah, you we're, give... even, we're, we're below Pagani, if you could believe it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give a two as well, I, I agree. Yeah, there's just nothing in that. And, and there's nothing wrong with a cash grab. I do a lot of cash grabs myself. Um, but that is just, yeah. And also because a lot of the times, they're just going to the same factory that's pumping the watch out. Yeah. And, you know, waiting till nighttime and saying, okay, give me 100 more and put, you know, WD on the dial. Instead of right, DW. right, right, right. And then, yeah. It's a bit like uh, uh, certain organized groups in Italy do with uh, high fashion. They, Got it. They, um, when the factories shut down, yeah. at night they take it over and they make, it's yeah. quite, it's quite, that's why a lot of these like, I'm not saying, but oh God. Yeah, you get, you get Versucci, not Versucci. Exactly. So, gotcha. and a lot of it's made by the same people, you know? Sure. Um, anyway, I will bleat that out for legal reasons. <laughs> yeah, well, there was a brand I carried a long time ago. I'll even say it was Arbitus. This is going back a long time. And the guy that owned the company told me that they made their dials where Movado made their dials in China. Same factory. Factory at night after they were done pumping out Movado dials, they would, and I was like, that's insane. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just goes to show you. Oh, absolutely. Actually, that, that kind of nicely segues into a question that I always wanted to ask you because Uh-oh. going back to Dan Henry, talking of factories in China, this is back in, when did he start? I think it was 2017 or 16. One of the things that I really respect about him is that he went to China, documented yeah. it on his blog, took pictures so you could see the factory. And there seems still to this day, there's this misconception that a bit like this scale, right? You got your low end doing counterfeit stuff, and then you got your high end doing the bulk of what the Swiss watch industry needs. Right. You know, you know the truth is out there. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not a secret. Um, because where do you think the other forty percent of the watch is made? <laughs> you know? Of course, of course. Swiss made. Um, yeah, that's the law. It's. It's no. It's no secret. Um, so, well, I really like the fact that he kind of demystified it a bit at the time. Um, mm-hmm. and it made me kind of believe in the brand because I respect that transparency and I, you know, like, right. um, so how many of these brands that we've talked about, how, how many do you think they're made in the same factory as the, the, uh, the illegal stuff? This, no, not many. I wouldn't say because China has, despite what people, you know, might think pretty strict anti, um, counterfeiting laws and stuff. Right. Um, and it's not worth it to them to get shut down. Whether it's corruption, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. It's not worth it to them to get shut down. You know, I deal with a few factories myself. I was buying crowns and they're like, yeah, we can sell you crowns. We just can't sell you them with an S on them. And I'm like, well, I don't want crowns with an S. I want crowns with my logo. And I said, but just curiosity, why? And I said, because everybody's gonna think it's a Seiko crown and we want nothing to do with anything wow. remotely re- related to that trademark. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no. Uh, the same factories, 
maybe I'm just naive. I don't think many. Mm. I don't think so. Because the factories where, let's say, um, my watches come from, or let's say, Zelos comes from, or let's say, uh, uh, NTH, or any of these other, you know, uh, I'm going to say better micro brands, if you will, mm -hmm. um, just the cost is higher because the cost of assembly is higher because the care in assembly is higher. Whereas when there is a $3 Daniel Wellington clone, you're not getting, you're not getting top marks for that. You know, no. the quality is not going to be all that great. So I would say more than likely not the same factories. Absolutely. I, I, I would actually like to add a little antidote. Antidote? No. Antidote no, is like when you're sick. Sorry. <laughs> you want a little... Uh, oh, God, what's post, the word? Postscript? Uh, no, um, anecdote. Oh, anecdote. Oh, you yeah. want to tell a story. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So sorry. you're not I, sick. Yeah. <laughs> Only for watches. Um, <laughs> True. There is no, and there is no known antidote. No, for there isn't. I'm trying very hard to get out of it, but there's no cure. Um, it, just to add on to that, um, damn it, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> right, okay. I, so there was a watch brand that um, I was designing or co-designing a watch with, right? I'm not going to name uh -huh. who because maybe they don't want this information out there. But we, we were going to have the watches made in Germany, right? Okay. And we, we sent prototypes back and blah, blah, to, um, to uh, sorry, they sent prototypes to us and they were terrible, right? Mm -hmm. Really, really bad. And this was a ver quite a high-end German watchmaker. And the reason was, was because this was a, an affordable, a very affordable watch, right? To keep it within budget, it, they had to produce it for cheaper, which meant that certain things were sacrificed, right? Yeah, certain corners were cut. Right. So... Um, and it's not because of their uh, in, um, incompetence. No, it's because right. that everything, every process costs costs money, right? So if you right. remove Q QC between each step to save money, then you're gonna get a product that is, you know, right. like, yeah, like I, I was, it. yeah. You you know all about this, right? But sure. for those who don't, maybe they for, don't, right? Yeah. For example, yeah. I went I went to the Tag Heuer factory, and after each process, right. Uh, for example, after hand assembly, there would be a separate section for QC. QC, right? yeah. Then there will be this section for polishing. Then QC again. QC right? again, yeah. So that's why a watch can cost a thousand dollars, but then someone else can sell the same spec for less, right? Mm -hmm. Now you, could, of course, no, no one's, no one's impervious to mistakes, and you know. No. Nope. Um, but my point, what what I was saying is that so then we took the same watch design and we took it to China, and they yeah. did an amazing job for the yep. same price, yep. right? Yep. So I'm just, I'm gonna put that out there. So it's th this perception of, oh, Germ you know, it's German, German made or Swiss made, it's always better, it's, it's, a, it's, it's no, depends. It's a, it's a complete farce. I mean, obviously also I would say that the, more than, more like, more than likely the German workers, quality of life is probably better than the China workers quality right. of life. I'm just gonna guess. Um, but you know there was we, there was a saying, and I think the saying is very popular uh, amongst many um, many industries. Uh, was it? it's price, quality, and schedule. Pick two out of three. You can never get all three. Right. right Drop. Right, right. You know something's always going to be sacrificed. You know, and so like you said, you know, you, and the reason you do QC between each step is because the last thing you want to do is skip all the QC, and then it gets to final QC, and the hands are misaligned. Well, right. guess what? Now you got to undo the whole thing. Whereas if you just did a five minute QC and five minute, five second QC after the hands were put on, you would have caught mm, it. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Right. The, the longer mistakes go, they keep, there's a, there was another saying, saying in my industry, uh, in engineering, that it, like every step that a design proceeds and there's a mistake in it, the cost to fix it goes up by a factor of 10. Right, right, right. So right. catch it when it's pencil on paper and it's free. Right. Catch it when it's fielded in, you know, a hundred different F-18s, like, yeah, it could be a little costly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, that must be terrifying because, you know, somebody's riding around in that, you know? Yeah. Or flying yes. around, rather, yeah. Yeah, ri riding and flying, having a good time. Right, so the last, the last one, one two, number eight. Did we Wait, which, one, which one do we just do? Wait, Fashion one, watch two, homages three, or... four, five. Oh, six, seven, yeah, eight, got it. Sorry, can't count. Yeah, it's fine. Eight, uh, this is watch modders because technically... Most, 
mods I've seen are a homage of something either really, really expensive. I've done it myself. I had a Seiko modded in the style of, a, of the James Bond uh, 6538, you know, the Dr. No, mm -hmm. uh, which of course is like one of the rarest Rolexes. There's obviously kind of, is it a Franken? Is it because I had the dial custom made, it's not sure. by Seiko. So then that right. opens up the discussion. Oh, you know, TGV made a Franken watch, you know, it's like, oh, come on. There's watches that are completely custom made, unlike anything else, right? Right. And you could say, you know, I, there's a company, I forget the name, but is did customized, specialized in customized, uh, customizing Rolexes. Have, yeah. you seen, have you seen that? Well, which one? There's Bamford? That's the one, yeah, yeah. Okay. And there was another one that Rolex took took to town and ripped them a new one, and Rolex won in, in legal. Oh, I forgot God. what it was. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I know Bamford. Yeah, I vaguely remember something, hearing something about that, yeah. Yep. I still, I'm still going to put them in this list because there are, you know, okay. I see so many Seikos trying to be Royal Oaks or trying to be this or trying yeah. to be that. You know, there's the 55 Fathoms, is it 55? 50 yeah. Fathoms, 55 Fathoms. Yeah, they call it the 55 because it's... Okay. Yeah, it's like a... Another five Fathoms, huh? Yeah, which I owned as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. So are we talking watch modders? So this is more than just the individual... You know, uh, I'll just sh I'll shout him out. Loomshot. You know, he's you know he did watch my custom. You know, bespoke watches. You know, you could commission a watch. Are we kind of talking about that, or but are we also do talking about it at scale? Oh, that's a good point because uh, there's a vi big difference between what he does. Which yeah, is, which is really amazing. Yeah, I, I, and the people I recommend, like uh, shout out to uh, Watchmakers Four and Tempest Watches in the UK. Those those are my two go two go to guys, and they're very professional. Right. You know, they have all the equipment. They'll pressure test it. But they're everything. not cranking out, you know, a hundred watches a week. No. Nah. Right. No, they're very so, meticulous. They're very professional. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'll say that then, if we're talking about the homegrown person. Yeah. You know, I give them like an, I give them like an eight. I think they're fairly authentic. Right. Um, because I think there's a love of it. Um, you know, a lot of times we tend to commodi commoditize, we tend to make watches into commodities. Um, right. But I think if it's someone that's doing it on a personal modding level, even if it's doing it for business, there's a love, there's a knowledge, um, there's a lot of uh, good feelings going on and definitely good intentions. Um, right. Uh, you know, to give somebody something that, you know, they truly can't afford. You know, I, I can't afford, a, you know, a double red or whatever. And mm -hmm. they make it out of an SKX 007 case. And it's simply amazing. In a way, it's where you started, right? Ex it's exactly where I started. Exactly. Um, so, you know, we, we did uh, Your Watch Your Way for a number of years. Um, you know, let people <clears throat> mod their own SKX to their liking, you know, through a bunch of uh, choices. Um, mm -hmm. But I give them an eight. I give them an eight. Oh, um, wow. For the individual. Okay. Yeah, for the, for the individual. Also, we should take into consideration one, um, many, many years. If one of the first few years of, on my YouTube, I, uh, I bought um, SKX from um, a modder in, in the UK, not Tempest. I must be very, very clear because Tempest is great, but a modder in the UK. And uh, after a few years, it stopped working. I, I okay. went, ha, sent, uh, sent it to my watch guy to have it fixed. He opened it up and he said, this, this, this has non-original, non-Seiko non parts in it. Got it. And I was like, wow, okay. So that was never disclosed to me. Right. Because anybody can do it, it kind of brings it down a little bit. Yeah, I agree you with You know, that's the negative. But if yep. you stick to gut, you know, do your due diligence and there's some great guys out there, you know, they mm -hmm. even make a living off it. And I, th and I think, oh, sure. yeah, so I'm going to yeah. go seven. You're going to go eight. I know, I'm going to go seven. I told you, I'm going to lump all the other people into it. And oh, they're, they're, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to bring me down to a seven. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, so should we tally up the s scores? Yeah, um, I will. And then you will separately and we'll see what we come up with. Obviously uh, reissues would be 20 because it's 10 plus right. 10. And then the, the crap at the bottom would be the, would be the the replicas they get a two right. Re, number one has to be the reissues because we both agreed those are 10 out of 10s yes. so that's 20 points yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So that's number one okay yeah. so number two um in second place i have a two-way tie between the heritage stuff like you said the tissot prx uh -huh. um, and we just discussed the watch, watch modders, modders uh and whoever else so i right. think that's a tie for second place got it 
Agreed? Yes, agreed. Third okay, place. In, in third place, I have the Moonlighters, such right. as uh, Steinhardt, Squale, um, whoever else is kind of, I say, playing both sides of the field. And I, I yeah, guess yeah, yeah, yeah. Islander is going to be one of those as well. We're getting into our okay, own stuff. Okay, we're putting, as well, yeah, so. let's put Islander in there. Yeah, put in me there, in yeah. there. I want to, you know, <laughs> I'm in there. Uh, so I'm in third place. Not bad. I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fourth place would be your vintage homages. You had vintage said like inspired, a, yeah. Vintage inspired, like WMT, um, Dan, Dan Henry. Henry. Do we put Laurier in there? You, if you want, I don't know. I would say he's not. I would say no, because I, I feel like when I look at his watches, I you know, I look at a Dan Henry and I immediately, I guess I think Porsche design or I think yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, if you would show me a WMT, I would say, oh, that's a lapis lazuli dial or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you show me a Laurier, and I'm not like immediately, oh, that's a you know, that's an oyster, it's an oyster date or or a, uh, the quartz one, you know, because with the square bracelets and stuff. Yeah. I don't think any of that. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You know? Sorry. Scrap that. Sorry. Yeah. I, I would put him. I'm in very there. sorry, Lorenzo and Lauren. Yeah. I was just saying, come on, give the guy some credit. <laughs> Because I'll tell you, I, I picked up his, I was, well, brief segue, I picked up his new tonneau-shaped watch oh, it's um, gorgeous, at the watch it? show. And I was like, wow. I mean, it's a little small for my tastes, yeah. but it's great that, uh, I was like, wow, beautiful. No yeah. running seconds. It was awesome. Yeah, it's very, very awesome, nice. Awesome. I love that watch. I think that uh, was in my top 10 of watch releases for last year, actually. Yeah. That we, that oh, we nice. did. Yeah. Okay. Um, who's next? Uh it looks like you're uh, the Paganis of the world. Oh, really? They're worse? Oh, no, they're better than the uh, the fashion? Be yeah, because the fashion guys came out with a four. Right. Look at that. You're like, oh, this is no good. we got to reshoot this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so, yeah, the Paganis and whoever else, Steel Dives, whoever else you want to lump into there, yeah. they're in fifth place. Uh, and then sixth place is the kind of replica fashion watch industry. Right, right. How's that sound? Perfect. And bringing up the pooper would be the blatant replicas. Right. With a score of two. This kind of works out nicely because I feel like, I don't think, I don't believe that somebody is either pro or, or anti homage. I mean, they can be, I, I, but yeah. I feel it, it's everyone has a level. Yeah, I would say so. You almost can't off. own a watch if you're totally against homages. Exactly. It's very hard to find anything that doesn't have a design inspiration from anything else. Exactly. So where would you, where do you draw your line? I, I, it's funny, I'll tell you, I think it's what I do um, in, my own, in my own lineup, mm -hmm. the homage direction that I go, that's probably my line. That's probably my floor. Um, where I would go. You know, something that looks like the original, maybe it's got some upgrades, it's a little bit better. Um, obviously, it doesn't have the same name on the dial. Um, that draw, I would draw, I would draw the line um, right. for myself. Yeah. How about you? Um, a a anything above. So definitely not an eagle. Obviously, uh, replicas. Definitely not fashion watches. Yeah. And not and not. You're the, not you're not a Pagani guy. No, not the Pagani guy. So anything up from that, I'm fine with. See, I'm trying to see if what what, what I own from this collection. And, if, and guys, if I actually do. If you have a Pagani and you're happy, I'm not yeah. knocking your choice. I was going to say, you know, yeah. the views expressed this video are yeah. those of the creators and yeah. should not have any impact on your design, uh, on your decisions. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. And please make it. <laughs> <laughs> Consult your lawyer, member FGIC. If you have an issue with it, please, please waste your own time and make an hour long podcast uh, talking <laughs> crap about me. Go ahead. I don't, I don't care. And then clipping together my, my crummy audio. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give you full permission, you know, go ahead. Um, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I probably am, yeah, I have some diver homages. I, um, you know, the, uh, the Steinhardts and Squales of the world. So I own a yeah. couple of those. That's probably yeah. where I am, personally. Fair enough. Um, and I think that's what I'd recommend too. I, I would, you know, like, I don't want to, the, the reason why I'm not going to have Pagani and all these things is because if a thousand people decide to buy a watch because I said it was good, right, 
and it probably was good, or I had a good experience. And then like- You had a good experience, yeah. 10% of those people get ripped off. And then it's like, there's, that's a hundred people that are very unhappy. And yeah. right. so that's why yeah. you, you won't see certain brands ever on my channel, unless they're willing to fund my villa in Tuscany. <laughs> hey! <No. laughs> I see you now sipping your Chardonnay. Yeah, <laughs> Chardonnay. Um, actually, I quite like Riesling. I'm, I'm getting oh, into Riesling. Yeah, so I'm, I'm way out of my jurisdiction. Right. I, dr I drink seltzer. <laughs> right. That's about it. <laughs> I think we'll wrap it up there. I think, I think okay, that was... Okay, great. Yeah, guys, what were your scores? Where do you draw the line? Share all that good stuff uh, down below in the comments. Suggestions for the next show. I, uh, do you think, are you pro against? What do you th feel about homage watches? All of that good stuff in the comments. I gotta give a massive thank you to Mark for sponsoring the production of this video as always. Uh, so you. I really, really appreciate it. Pleasure. And um, yeah, subscribe to Mark and Instagram. Yeah, and give, me a sub give me a subscribe. Yeah, give me yeah. subscribers, yeah. come on. Hit the Damn bell it. notification, whatever that does. I, I don't even know, but. I don't yeah. think it does anything. I don't think so either. Because I'll get notifications that you put out a video, because I really don't subscribe to many people at all. And I got the bell click for you, and I'll get a notification like a day and a half later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I click notify me, nothing happens. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. Cause like by the time I saw your latest video, it already had like 150,000 views. I was like, oh, what the hell did I miss? What did he put out? Oh my God, he's not collecting watches anymore. I gotta watch this. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mark. Pleasure. Take right. care. And we will catch you next month. Ciao. Later.